so I thought I'd show you just a couple of things you can do in Excel. And this is also walking through this first quiz over here. So there's a couple of trig review questions. Here's the old unit circle. And let's say you want to go through and convert radians to degrees or something. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my snipping tool. It's very convenient for grabbing problem statements and copy and paste them over into things like Excel that you can use, or you can use your print screen. Most computers have a print screen. So I'm going to go ahead and just make one column for radians, and I can start filling this in. So say equals, this is how you do pi in Excel, just type in pi. So there's pi divided by 6 or equals. You have to start with an equal sign to calculate anything in Excel, but it's not Right, so you can just kind of go down the line. Let me go ahead and use formula text in here just so you can see what I was um, typing in. There we go. Okay, so that is what is typed into this cell just so you can see it. Okay, so here is my radians. I'll go ahead and merge and center, put some. I'm going to have you guys kind of set up your own worksheets for this thing just to to get used to using some of this. Excel is a very useful tool that hopefully you'll be using in, in a lot more than just my class. So for over here, I'm going to say degrees, and I can go ahead and change the color on that too. Okay, so a couple different ways to change this over to degrees. I can say equals degrees and see how it's actually filling this function in for me as I type it. So that's another really handy thing. There's a lot of pre-made functions and hopefully you guys are all good at using Google or if you'd like to see me demonstrate any of these things just shoot me a note and I'm happy to write make another video for you guys. So that's a really handy little conversion tool. Let me control C, control V. So you can we do the column widths over here. You can copy and paste things. And then once this is in here once, if you grab this lower right-hand corner and your, your cursor kind of turns into this black X, if you double click, it'll automatically copy it all the way down until there's nothing left on the left-hand side and see how it even updates the cell. So this is cell B3, and the next one is grabbing it off of cell B4. So it'll automatically update those cells for you too, so very handy. Let's go ahead and go the other direction. So I'm gonna put just kind of a little spacer in here. And for the next little bit, we'll, go, we'll put degrees in and change from degrees to radians instead of radians to degrees. So I'll say 30, 60, 180. And for radians, I'm going to say equals radians of this. So instead of typing in degrees, I'm typing in radians. And the same thing, I can either click and drag that down, or if it has something next to it, and you can double click. It needs something in the in the row just to the left of it to, to copy that down. For these next few problems, we can go ahead and copy and paste these over too. So there's a few with just right angle triangles that if you know one of the sides or two of the sides, one of the angles or something, can you figure out the rest of this? So I'm going to go ahead and say edit copy and pull this into a new worksheet. You can get new worksheets just by clicking on the plus sign over here. So I'll say control V and you don't have to set these tables up just like I am, but I'm going to go ahead and say, so here's the lengths of the sides and maybe this is for the three different angles that are in there or something. Okay, so if I know that this long hypotenuse side C has a length of 5, and I know the angle B, so this is this lower right-hand angle, is 30 degrees. 
and I don't know, maybe I want to split this up. All of the sine and cosine functions for Excel, they like to use radians. So I'm going to go ahead and say equals radians. Might as well set that up. OK, so how would I go about trying to find these other sides? So if I know the hypotenuse and I know this angle, then A, that's the adjacent side to this angle B. So A is going to be equal to the hypotenuse times cosine of, and I'm going to grab this radian cell because all of the sine cosine tangent in Excel, it likes to use radians. OK, so there is the cosine. Let me just say equals formula text. And then for side B, B is opposite. So we'll go ahead and say B is equal to the hypotenuse times sine of the radians. OK, so that would be the three different sides. And if we know one of those angles, we know the angle C for this guy is 90. And we also know that all the angles add to 180. So I can say equals 180 minus 30 minus, I guess, 90 doesn't really matter, but that would be the third angle. And I can even pull up and get the radians of all the angles. So if you go through and kind of set up the different scenarios for this, then this would be another nice little reference sheet to make for yourself. We'll, we'll be adding a lot of vectors together and using the SOHCAHTOA law signs, law of cosines. And if you make some tables like this for yourself, you should be able to use that again in the future so that I can type in any number here. So maybe instead of 5, maybe that length was 8 instead. And because I have everything is linked to that initial cell, then it'll update everything else for me without having to kind of plug and check numbers in. So if you, if you set this up for one scenario, and maybe I'll color code. So the number I put in is yellow, and then everything it calculates is in green or something. So you can make your own color code for it. And let's see, I think. Yeah, this is what we typed in for this problem. So I'll make that yellow, and then I'll make everything else green. So see, I can make a couple of little tables. And again, organize this however you would like to, whatever makes sense for you. But if you have a few different scenarios like this, then I can go through and I can change the length of a side. I could even change the length of the angle, right? So that would be 45, 45, which means that the two sides are the same length. Or I can change this, and it'll update everything. So it's really worth it to set some of these up in Excel so you have a nice little reference sheet for yourself. OK, this is the scenario for right triangles. Let's go ahead and make one more sheet that we could plug in, like the law of sides or the law of cosines. I like this table, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to right click on the sheet and say move or copy. And to click, see this little box here, you have to click create a copy box and you can say move to the end, OK. And now I have two copies of this sheet, so that's a real handy way to copy things over. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that 90 degree angle triangle, and we'll go ahead and set this one up for some of those random triangles with sine or cosine. So let me pull up that quiz, and I'm going to grab my snipping tool again. The quiz has a couple of notes in here. If It's been a while since you had trig, so edit copy. And I'll go ahead and put this reference triangle in so that I know what my A, B, and C is. And we'll just go through one of these problems. 
And let's see, I'm going to go ahead and copy across these guys too, just to remember what law of sines and law of cosines. And again, if you set this up in Excel, it'll be a nice little reference sheet for you to be able to use in the future. Okay, so remember the law of sides, it's opposite. So the ratio of the angle over that opposite side, so A is opposite A and little c is opposite C. For the law of cosines, cosines is what you know, if you just know one of the angles and at least two of the sides, you have to have at least three pieces of information for these. So for law of cosines, if I know two sides and the angle between those two sides, so like B and C, and then the angle between B and C is A, if I have that little corner of information, then I can solve for the opposite side, and then you can, you can combine law of cosines and law of sines and walk around these triangles to get all of the information you need. Okay, so for this one scenario... It looks like we have the length of side A, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. And then I also have the angle B and also the angle for A. I guess I should have left that radiant in there. So here's my radians. And if I know two of the sides, I'm going to do that thing again where I'll, I'll color code what I put in for yellow and what I calculate in green. So I'm going to say 180 minus 100, and I know this is going to be just 20. But in the future, I can change around these angles, and it'll automatically calculate everything for me. Okay, so it calculates that third angle. And what I want to solve for is these other two sides. And I think probably this ratio is going to be the easiest. I'm going to go ahead and take the inverse of this. So the side over sine A. Maybe I'll add another row in here. Okay, ratio of A divided by sine A. And then I can go ahead and use that ratio to solve for the other sides. And again, set this thing up however you want, but I'm going to say the side divided by, and remember it likes to use radians. So be sure and grab radians and not degrees on there. So that's the ratio of A over A. And then if I want B, so B is going to be equal to this ratio times sine of B. And I again, I'm using the radians here. Or C is going to be equal to this ratio times the sine of C. Let me go ahead. So this is what was given. And then these are the two that we're solving for. So we'll go ahead and put those, those formulas in there so you can see. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense for the law of sines. I'll leave the law of cosines for, for you to do for another one. But if you get this set up, you can kind of have this in the background for a lot of your calculations so that you don't have to do this over and over and over again. But you can just change the numbers around. So let's say instead of 60 degrees, what if it was only, I don't know, 50 degrees? Then it'll recalculate everything for you. Or if the side was 10 instead of 15, then it'll calculate all of that for you. So it's, it's very handy to, to get these guys set up. Okay, thanks for watching.